Glowworm is the story of Zelie de Brule, who is a young insect collector who has an existential crisis in the middle of one night when she tries to collect uh, a glowworm to add to her collection of specimens and she realises that she can't do it. And uh, it starts to kind of feed into all these insecurities and buried memories in her life. And so the show goes really deep into her head and so she sort of tries to figure out who she is. Myself and Hannah and Tom were talking about the idea of creating a multidisciplinary performance where design, performance and text could come together in equal measure. The initial idea was to combine my love of uh, Victorian uh, boarding school adventure stories like, um, like sort of a, your Harry Potters, your series of unfortunate events, um, Roald Dahl. Um, children's literature. I love Tom's story, I love his language, I, I loved the images he was creating and he, it was it's so so rich. <laughs> it gave me so much to to source from or to work with and, and to react to. And we decided that we wanted to um, do exactly this kind of work and, 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 and uh, explore intersection between our disciplines. How do you make a show where it's as much about the story as it is about the design as it is about the action? What we tried to do was create a sort of a dynamic performance style where each section of the story could be told in a different way. We wanted to stay away from it feeling like a totally narrative piece, finding um, different theatrical realizations for um, and, and ways of storytelling. Traditionally, there's a script that comes in and the director maybe marks the moments that he really wants to hit with the actors and then later on, um, designers will come in. And this was unusual in that the script was getting written as it was being rehearsed. Because it meant that the idea started as a seed, but it, it it sort of took off in lots of different directions as things grew into other things. And you might have an idea that happens in a rehearsal room that's totally accidental. And suddenly you go, that's amazing, let's, let's make a feature of that. It was all give and take on all sides, which is fantastic. And I think it's very rare that you find that openness to collaborate and to adapt to each other. I've got to say, I've never worked with somebody, um, with both of them, Davy and Hannah, where there's, there, I, there's never been an easier shorthand. It was a prose story initially. I tried to, again, fill it with enough action that it would be relatively easy to transfer to the stage, but there's still a point at which, you know, and we ran into this pretty early on in this process, where you just want to get rid of all the narration and just see some things happen. At its core, it's about a girl who can't make a decision. Um, so it's very difficult to stage inaction or hesitation or, or panic. Uh, without it feeling very static. So finding the internal energy of, of what's, what that's doing to a person and finding a way to explore that on the stage um, was a really interesting part of this process. I, I do believe that there is something in there for everyone to, to find or to recognize or connect with. On the one hand you feel like you're watching kind of a Roald Dahl story but on the same time it's dealing with real issues that real people face. I think everyone remembers their first kiss or their first crush um, being afraid. I, I believe that um, everyone has gone through these moments in some form or another possibly very different from the way they're told in the story. I mean we, we say that it's a show for the old head and the young heart so that I think older people can enjoy it because it taps into a kind of a childlike nostalgia that I think is in everybody whether they like to admit it or not. And it's also for young people as well, like we've had some great audiences with kind of young kids between sort of 6 and 12 who really enjoy I think the theatrical magic of it where something can turn into something else and it's quite unpredictable. We've had a couple shows already where it's really worked out well, like kids 8, 9, 10 have given adults permission to indulge in some of their more, you know, when the lights come down, a kid will be scared automatically. And it takes a little more work, I think, to get 
an older person maybe to, to get at that, the, the little kid inside that goes, ooh, something scary is about to happen. I feel like this show at the moment when the world is so overwhelming, um, it's refreshing, I think, to take the time to focus a little bit on yourself, a little bit internally, and to, to bring the best parts of yourself out. Thank mm -hmm. you.